Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Adrian, and uh, hi, everybody. How are you doing? I, I'm really excited to be here. I had a great time in Chicago. I'm uh, from the Bay Area, and I noticed blue skies, a little humid, but a great lake, uh, lake view. So give it up for Chicago. So I want to tell you a little bit about Ancestry. We are a 34-year-old company, and it feels like a startup. So we are like, like a 34-year-old startup. We've been in the family history business for about 34 years, digitizing records, creating deep emotional connections for, uh, and for customers. And more recently, we have been in the consumer genomics space, where we do gene, uh, DNA testing. And uh, we are now the largest DNA database in the world, and we use the intersection of science and technology to create deep, meaningful connections for our customers. So that's who we are. And uh, so we have a business which has been around for many years, and we have a business like the consumer genomics business, which has been growing rapidly and feels like a startup. So we undertook this journey of the AWS migration to help us with the pace of innovation. Um, so what we do is really use data, technology, to answer deep fundamental questions. Where do I come from? How do I belong? What can I pass on? So let me tell you a story. I used to travel to San Diego quite a lot, and I became friends with a limo driver who would pick me up from the airport, take me to the office, and then come back. And uh, in January, before I took this job at Ancestry, I said, hey, this is my last time I'm coming to San Diego. Thank you for all your services. Really got to know you. And we became friends over that uh, course of two or three years. And he said, Nat, so where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to Ancestry. And he says, you won't believe this, uh, his mom, uh, is 75 years old, and she discovered last year that she was adopted. So they didn't know much about their, their ethnicity, their ancestry, where they came from, and uh, he ordered a DNA test for his mom and his siblings, and through that they were able to discover that even though she was adopted in Mexico, she has 34% Italian blood in her. And it was a game-changing discovery for him and, I mean, and his family. So that's what we do. We take the power of data, technology, and we create, uh, and create deep, meaningful connections for, and for our customers. So we have been, since 1983, you know, going to 80-plus countries, churches, parishes, getting birth, rec birth records, death records, marriage records, and we've amassed, really, uh, a lot of big data. 20 billion records, historical records, some dating back to the 13th century. We have 90 million family trees people have, have created, and we have 10 billion profiles of people, most of them dead, but you can make, uh, make connections to your, uh, I mean, to your ancestors. And uh, about 330 million user-generated content, uh, stories, photographs uh, I mean, that they actually upload to our site, and more recently, four million DNA databases, which is the largest DNA database in the world. So we use all this data, so we leverage all this data, and we crunch this information to, again, answer deep emotional questions about where, where people are from. So let me tell you a fun fact. This is our CEO, Tim, Tim Sullivan, and uh, Tim's been, been with the company for about, uh, I mean, over 12 years, and he's a great guy. And uh, so we use this sort of technology on him to see what we'll find out, what kind of fun discoveries we can find out about Tim. So we have this technology called Big Tree, which uh, captures the graph of humankind. So through this technology, we were able to discover that Tim is related to, to Taylor Swift. <laughs> and um, so as you can tell, uh, you know, through Sarah and Peter, uh, Tim's Tim's related to uh, um, Taylor Swift. He's the eighth cousin, twice removed. Tim's very excited about it. I don't know about Taylor Swift. <laughs> but it's fun, right? Deep, deep connections. And, and we believe graphing out humankind can actually help the world become a better place if we create these, uh, these connections. So we went all in on AWS. We, we, we sort of decided that you know, for speed, agility, not cost. Cost was not a driver for us. It was really about innovation and speed, which drove us to picking uh, AWS. And we went all in on this. So we decided not only compute, 
but we were going to use all the other SPAS services that, uh, that became available to us. And also, we wanted a system where we could leverage the deep science and machine learning capabilities in the future. Um, these are some of the services we use. You saw Adrian talk about all the new innovation that is constantly ha uh, happening at uh, AWS. But we, we are leveraging 30-odd you know, services uh, off the bat, which is, which is really fast. And it's, uh, we move some of our big services, like BigTree and Solar, in a matter of six months uh, to the cloud. Um, let me give you an example of how we use Aurora. And we're using Aurora for our big tree technology, which is making this connection of humankind kind possible. Now, this is a fairly large database for, I mean, for our standards. It is 30 billion records, rows of data. It changes 400 times a second and about 35 million changes a day. So a significant amount of data with a lot of changes. We were able to move using Amazon services uh, to I mean, Aurora in five days. So a very short period of time. We had a lot of help from them. And we're very happy with the results. Our response times are down to less than a millisecond. It was 10 times higher before that. And we got a lot of robustness and stability of these systems as we moved to Aurora. And uh, we love a few things. And I'll give you a couple of examples of what we love about the services that uh, we have used so far. Uh, so we use S3 to store all our uh, um, image data. And in S3, what we found is, you know, we do a lot of digitization of uh, data, photographs, et cetera. So we had a, a collection of about a million uh, of images we had to move. And it would have taken us about six to nine months to do it on our own systems. It took less than a couple of months to do it on uh, S3. So we're very excited with the pace of change and innovation we are, we are already getting. So this migration has been really rapid for us. And in, six, in about nine months, this is what we've been able to do. We've moved eight petabytes of data to Amazon, six petabytes of images, and 6,000 of the 12,000 VMs we have are already working in, uh, in production. And by the time the migration is finished, we will have about 550 databases and about 500 services moved, moved to Amazon. Again, really rapid pace. In nine months, we've been able to accomplish this. And another 12 months, we'll be able to exit our our data center. Finally, let me spend a few minutes talking about lessons learned. As you can imagine, this is a pretty massive change for us. And uh, we learned that you know, change is hard. When we're used to doing things a certain way, we expect it a certain way. When we have control over a data center, uh, we have certain expectations. And we got to unlearn them and figure out how we adopt new tools. Secondly, this was an executive mandate down. So we had support from the CEO downwards to get this done. We had a majority of our teams focused on this uh, for the last nine months. Um, adopting a cloud mindset is something that every developer has to embrace. And finally, um, automate everything. I think this was the biggest lesson learned. Because in the cloud, things are ephemeral. And if you automate it, you get the agility that you deserve in the cloud. So in conclusion, I'm excited to our move move to Amazon. It's really enabled a uh, lot of pace of change. We are pioneering a new industry in, in um, consumer genomics. And using big data, we are leveraging you know, uh, all the data we have with the technology and moving to the cloud to create deep, meaningful connections for our customers. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>